it's Jack from Cultaholic.com back again with more wrestling news. Lots of very interesting stories to talk about involving a lot of the contemporary issues of the day in the wrestling industry. So without any further ado, let's get into those headlines. First of all, Undertaker's return date to WWE has reportedly been revealed. Next up, we take a look at backstage details on the very bizarre ending to this week's Monday Night Raw. And finally, there's been an update on AEW star Chris Statlander as she continues along her road to recovery. So first of all, let's talk about The Undertaker. Of course, he appears very seldom these days. He cropped up on day one of this year's WrestleMania, defeating AJ Styles in the Boneyard match in the main event. But on the whole, we don't really tend to see Undertaker unless it's a very special occasion. So I'm talking about things like WrestleMania, sometimes maybe SummerSlam, the Royal Rumble occasionally, perhaps maybe if it's involving WrestleMania, and obviously any show in Saudi Arabia, all equally big platforms. And according to WrestleVotes on Twitter, it might not be too long until we see Undertaker back again at this year's Survivor Series. And that's because this year's Survivor Series is of course the 30th anniversary of Undertaker in WWE. That's right, the dead man made his infamous debut at the 1990 Survivor Series on the same show that the gobbledygooker also made his debut, uh, and obviously has just gone on to become one of WWE's biggest and most legendary names of all time. And according to WrestleVotes, they've said that the upcoming uh, 22nd of November Survivor Series pay-per-view will be built around the 30th anniversary of The Undertaker, including him making a live appearance on the show. Now this sounds very exciting, and you might be thinking, well, who's he gonna face? What's gonna happen because it's such a big occasion? Will it be someone like Kane, for example, a crucial figure from his past? Will it be a newer star to try and help them get over by association? Well, in fact, WrestleVotes have said something which kinda makes that less certain because they reckon that a source states as of now, The Undertaker will not be wrestling at the event. Now, of course, I feel like often as wrestling fans, we can ask a little bit too much of certain wrestlers, and Undertaker is probably one of them, so I don't feel like I can really stand here and say, oh, why is he not wrestling? When realistically, he's been in the company for 30 years, which is an incredibly long time. And obviously, as we've seen, you know, father time catches up with everybody. Everybody slows down in the ring. I'm sure he could work a match against somebody who would just bump all over the place for him, and maybe he will. Plans could obviously change, but according to WrestleVotes, as of now, the plan is for Undertaker to make an appearance at the show, which is only right, it's his 30th anniversary, but not to wrestle. Next up, let's go back to Monday Night this week, which saw a very uh, mixed reception to Monday Night Raw, a very strange show, and also, of course, a very strange ending to the show as well. So for those who didn't see it, what happened was Randy Orton was cutting a promo inside the Hell in a Cell structure to hype his match with Drew McIntyre for the WWE title at this weekend's pay-per-view. And Orton got himself locked in the Hell in a Cell to protect himself from Drew and to taunt him when he came down and to say, come on, Drew, come and get me. But then Drew cut the cage door open with a pair of bolt cutters, I think, and then stepped inside the Hell in a cell structure and then the show went off the air it, it ended on quite like a like as if it was a tv series and it's making you think what's going to happen next week except next week obviously it's just a whole new episode of raw so i mean we won't we won't find out we might see some kind of replay but it's not going to pick up where we left off is it it was a very strange ending to raw we're usually used to seeing raw end on a more final sort of moment, a more climactic moment, a moment, a payoff. We're used to seeing Raw end on a payoff, whether it's in favor of the babyface or the heel, Raw usually ends on a note of some sort, not just on a, and then, if you know what I mean. But according to PW Insider, uh, they've revealed some backstage details of the finish and the timing of the show, because a lot of people were saying, did they run out of time? Did they have to call an audible and just get the show off the air on such a climactic, like, moment? Uh, no, apparently not. PW Insider have said the closing of last night's Monday Night Raw with Drew McIntyre closing the door on the Hell in a Cell went off the air as it was envisioned. They go on to say, we've had a few readers ask if perhaps the company was running late with the segment and ran out of time, but we've been told by multiple sources that the ending we saw was the ending that Vince McMahon approved. It's a strange one, isn't it? And I guess the point was, which, because apparently this seems to have been the plan and it wasn't anything called on the fly, I guess the point of it was to encourage people to buy Hell in a Cell. Maybe they'll have an update for us on SmackDown this week. I really don't know, but uh, that's the long and short of this news story is that that ending to Raw was indeed the ending that had been written. Sticking with Raw for a second, because of course it was the season premiere, uh, we're gonna talk about the ratings. Now the ratings dropped from last week's draft edition of Monday Night Raw, 
but that's not necessarily as bad a thing as it sounds at first. I'll explain what I mean. So the season premiere of Raw did 1.78 million viewers and a 0.52 in the 18 to 49 demographic, down 4% in viewers and 9% in that younger demographic from last week's draft show. So that's just the figures. However, there's one more thing to take into account, which, which doesn't make this sound as drastic a drop as it might have at first, because the, the Dallas Cowboys were playing the Arizona Cardinals at the same time, and we know what a massive ratings draw Monday Night Football is over in the States. So that game, for contrast, remember Raw did a 1.78 million, that game did 11.32 million and a 3.57 in the 18 to 49 demographic, whereas, you know, Raw did a 0.52. So you can see the immediate difference there. It's no news that the NFL is bigger than pro wrestling in this day and age. I mean, that's, that's not news at all. So it's not actually as bad as it seems. In fact, the drop may have been a bit less than everybody was predicting. Everybody might have thought, oh my God, they're going up against the Cowboys. Everything's going to just tank. And it, it didn't really. They were down 4% on the whole. However, uh, quite a, a bad piece of news for WWE on the whole is that if you compare this week, uh, this week's rating to the same week last year, the show is down 24% in viewers, 31% in the 18 to 49 demographic and 42% in the 18 to 34 demographic. So good news and bad news there for WWE and especially you know for Raw. Uh, short term, good news, it's only down a little bit despite going up against one of the biggest franchises in the NFL, one of the biggest and most popular franchises. Uh, and long term kind of bad news because you see compared to last year, just what a drop it has been for various different factors. Next up, Heath Slater has been talking to PW Insider. Now remember when Heath Slater came back in July and basically challenged Drew McIntyre because they were ex-stable mates, now Drew was the champion, and Heath wanted a little piece of that action, but you know, it was just kind of a one-off appearance and then he was cropping up in Impact Wrestling. Well, Heath has since revealed, talking to PW Insider, that apparently WWE actually pitched some other plans to him when the return happened. It was meant to be a longer term deal, but Slater turned it down. Slater said that apparently WWE wanted him to actually work the Extreme Rules pay-per-view as well. He said, it was a whole stint of me and Drew uh, doing what you saw on Raw, then the following week I go and work Dolph on Raw, then I have to do something at some pay-per-view, the horror show pay-per-view. The horror show at Extreme Rules, Heath. Come on now, my friend. He goes on to say, I got down there and they brought that up to me and I said, no, this is a one and done. And I have to respect Heath for sticking to his plans, you know, sticking to his guns, uh, signing with Impact Wrestling and becoming an established name there. He's obviously aligned with Rhino again, his old tag partner from WWE, and is getting regular TV appearances and regular work. Whereas obviously in WWE's massively deep talent pool, it's hard to say that he would have received the same treatment. Other factors obviously come into play, such as money, travel time, although not so much these days with the lockdown and everything. But on the whole, everybody's got a whole set of reasons for doing what they want to do and for making the decisions they make career-wise. So I think we can't judge Heath for turning this down from WWE, and I think good luck to him in Impact Wrestling, doing what he's doing. And finally, Chris Statlander talked recently to Wrestling Inc. about her ongoing road to recovery after tearing her ACL. It was a shame as well, because Statlander looked like she was being positioned as one of the key figures of the AEW women's division, uh, which has had a lot of bad luck in terms of injuries, hasn't it? Statlander was injured, Britt Baker was injured as well at the same time. They're two of the biggest names in the division straight away, out for quite some time. Statlander obviously out for longer, than Britt Baker. So Starlander said to Wrestling Inc, uh, I'm doing pretty good. She's, she's recovering from ACL surgery. She said, I'm doing pretty good. I think from what I've heard overall is that I might be a little bit ahead of others where I'm at right now, which is terrific news. She goes on to say, but I still have a real long way to go before I can re-debut basically and get back in the ring before I'm debuting again. And I'm gonna wanna be training a little bit before that. So she says, I'll be able to get in the ring before you'll see me back on TV. It could be another eight months or so. So I think from that, what she's saying is the recovery process might not be as long as eight months, but to get her back in ring shape, to get her training again, to shake off the ring rust and to get her used to what she's doing with obviously her surgically repaired knee as well, she reckons the whole thing's gonna be about eight months or so before we see her on TV again. Now that was a shame. I was quite sad when I read that because I really like Statlander. I think she's fantastic. And I was hoping that she'd maybe be back a little bit sooner, but obviously the priority is her long-term health. You wanna get you know, any sort of injury, particularly like a post-surgery thing as well. Really sort it out. Make sure that you know what you're doing on it before you start competing again. In any sport, I'm sure it's the same. So yeah, good luck to her on her road to recovery. I think she should take all the time she needs and uh, yeah, I can't wait to see her back in the ring. So that's it for this news video. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Jack from Cultaholic.com. Leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Stay safe out there, stay positive, and I'll see you very soon.